Hello everyone, today we're making pumpkin donuts. We're going to start off with clean hands, get some um, basic baking supplies like bowls and measuring cups, um, things like that. You're also going to need, since we are making donuts, you're going to need kind of a donut pan or I have one of the mini donut pans which I love because they're just bite size. Um, you can even use just regular cupcake pans, I've used that before, it works great. Um, don't forget to get kind of a mixing utensil, so you want, I have a whisk here. Um, also you will need scissors and a kind of like a gallon sized uh, Ziploc bag. Those are for later and I'll explain it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take my measuring cups, we're going to measure out one and three quarter cup of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through some of this because I was taking my time and making sure I got the measurements exactly correct so the video ended up being a little bit slow. So there is all the, the all-purpose flour. So next we're gonna go ahead and get out some baking powder and we're gonna measure out baking powder. Make sure it's not baking soda, it's baking powder. We're going to measure out one and three quarter teaspoon. That's another thing. Make sure it's a teaspoon. I've mixed it up sometimes and done tablespoons instead of teaspoons and things get weird when you bake. All right. We're also going to need some, uh, we need three quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I told you I was taking my time and the video runs a bit long. So now we're going to need a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg and then a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger and that kind of seems to be the mixture of spices that you use in pretty much anything pumpkin flavored so I'm kind of used to having those around the house. Now you're just going to kind of mix so I just use the whisk and I just kind of slowly mix try not to make a mess but I always end up making a mess just till it's very thoroughly mixed and it kind of you don't see any darker spots for the cinnamon so far. So next we're going to put in three quarter cup granulated sugar. Now this part of the recipe does ask for things to go in separate bowls but you can just really mix them all together and it comes out the exact same to me. So I mix that in. Now it's uh, three quarter cup packed light brown sugar. So just make sure it's nice and packed in there. See how it comes out in a mold. Mix that in really well. So as I'm mixing, I'm also trying to get rid of those chunks that brown sugar tend to leave behind. So I'm just kind of crushing the chunks and trying to make it less lumpy than it usually comes out as. And this is where the whisk really helps, and that's why I kind of like mixing with a whisk, is because it helps me be able to crush out all the the chunks and make sure that it's it's more of a sand and less of a rocky texture. So next, let's see here, we're going to put in oil. So we've got a half a cup of canola oil. It says canola oil. I was using vegetable oil, so really I think you could use anything, but canola, canola oil is what the recipe asks for. I just happen to only have vegetable oil at home, so yeah. And this is the part where the whisk was becoming a bit of a pain because stuff does get stuck in whisks. So you have to kind of try and get it out. <laughs> so you'll get this kind of chunky texture and, and yet again I was just kind of mixing and crushing trying to get to break up some of the chunks and everything. So next you're going to use three large eggs. Break those up and put those in there. Try not to get the shells in there. I was lucky this time I didn't get any shells in there. I didn't have to dig it out. So yay. So now we're going to um, mix it up some more. Yet again, like I said, the whisk was kind of being a pain with everything getting stuck in the middle of the whisk. And yeah, that's the only downside I find with those. <laughs> so I actually uh, switched over to a spatula. Kind of, I guess it's a spatula. Is that what they call them? I'm not sure. So I just got everything out of the whisk and decided that it would be easier with a different utensil. <laughs> I always have all of my my baking stuff within arm's reach too because I tend to switch up utensils and you know measuring cups and things like that quite often so 
I always make sure they're within arm's reach so I don't have to go hunting around the, the kitchen for them. So now we're going to get out the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the pumpkin. This is canned pumpkin puree. You can find them at any grocery store. It's a lot easier to find them from like October through December. The rest of the year, if you want to make anything pumpkin, it's a little bit more difficult to find them in grocery stores. But normally, if you find them in the baking aisle, you'll they'll have at least a couple cans um, year round. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna put one and a half cups of the canned pumpkin puree in there. And I love the smell of pumpkin, so every time I make this, it makes my mouth water. So the pumpkin puree is actually gonna make this mix uh, a little bit more liquidy, which really helps with the mixing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you just kind of, I kind of like fold it in there and just mix it in really well. And you'll start to see it kind of soften up a bit and not be as, as chunky. And next we have one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I couldn't get the camera to focus on that, but that I promise that is vanilla extract. And this is another thing that I absolutely love the smell of, so every time I open it, I have to smell it before I pour it in. I love the smell of vanilla, so just dropping that in there. And now I'm gonna just mix again, just mix as well as I can. And you'll start to notice the the mixture kind of takes on this like more of a liquidy. It's a little bit more. It's a little easier to work with. That's what I'm thinking. Of. It's a little bit easier to work with. All right. So now we're gonna take that Ziploc bag and those scissors. So what we're doing is we're we're creating like piping. So you don't actually need piping. We can use it just as Ziploc bag. So just go ahead and get that entire mixture in there. I'm using one of my um, measuring cups to just kind of dump it in there the best I can. It, this is a messy process, so if you have any suggestions for an easier way to do this, do me a favor, go ahead and just put it in the comments below. Help me out a little bit, that would be awesome. I've tried it a million different ways, just scooping it straight from the bowl, using you know different all kinds of different spoons and everything, so it's just always been messy. I think it's just gonna always be messy, but if you have an easier process, you let me know. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm just scooping everything out, trying to keep the mess contained, as you can tell. It's not going so well for me. But once you get um, all of the mixture into that bag, I mean, I lick the bowl. <laughs> I don't, I mean, there's eggs in it, raw eggs in it, but I've been doing that since I was a kid and I haven't had any issues, knock on wood. So, you can, you can know, if you like pump, pumpkin as much as I do, you can lick the bowl, that's fine. But so once I get the whole mixture and then you can tell I switched over to just kind of trying to scoop it out of the bowl. Not working that well. Very messy process. So once you get the whole mixture in there, you just kind of clean off whatever you need to clean off on the bag. Um, just kind of wiping the top around the Ziploc part. Now, when you, when you close it, make sure you get some of that air out as well, otherwise it's going to be a lot harder to pipe it out into the, the pan. So I'm going to set that off to the side, get everything kind of out of my way. I'm going to grab my, specifically my pumpkin donut pan. I did get this pan for pumpkin donuts because I'm, I'm that sad and depressing and I love pumpkin that much. So here's my donut pan. Now you take the Ziploc bag in the small corner. So you just take a very tiny piece of that corner. You can make it bigger if you need to, but you don't need a lot off. Just a tiny piece of that corner and you cut it off. I actually, that was a very small piece, but it was still even a little bit too big for what I needed it for. But it ended up working in the end. So now you just take that and you just kind of pipe it around the little, I guess, knob in the donut pans and this is going to be a quick process. I'm just going to go through it really quick. <laughs> but it actually did take me quite a while. It does take you a little bit. I just, I try to not make a mess, but it doesn't happen that way. Me baking is, is making a mess. So, yeah. Okay. 
And now you're going to bake the donuts for 13 to 16 minutes. And when they come out, they look kind of like this. Definitely bake through. Don't see any doughy parts. Nothing's still dripping anywhere. Things like that. So you kind of let them cool. Um, I let them cook for about 5 to 10 minutes. I just, I'll just i walk off and do something else and then go back to them. And then I have a mix of cinnamon and sugar in a large bag. Or you can even put it in like a container. Um, and I just kind of pick the donuts out and pop them up into the into the bag there. Now once you get them all out of the pan, go ahead and seal the bag. You are going to want to get some of that air out, so just remember to get a little bit of the air out. You don't need all of it out, just enough to where you can grip on the bag. And just shake really well. You just kind of want to get a nice coating over the donuts. Um, don't squish them or anything, just kind of shake, shake. Um, just till you have a nice coat of cinnamon sugar on top of the absolutely delicious pumpkin donuts. And this is kind of what they look like coming out of the minis. Um, mine are never, I guess, Instagram ready. <laughs> they're just kind of, they look like this, but they're absolutely delicious and they're great to have. I actually am making them, I'm going to make them for Thanksgiving morning so that we don't have to worry about breakfast. We can just eat, you know, out of a bowl of, of pumpkin donuts for breakfast. And that's, yeah, it's totally a healthy breakfast for us. <laughs> And there you go, those are the bite-sized pumpkin donuts that are absolutely delicious. I will put a link to the recipe down below. I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good one.